Oh yes, they're back again, ID cards, but this time they're digital and it looks like we're all getting them, at least in the UK anyway. We can now take a look under the hood of the UK's digital ID scheme, thanks to them putting the full spec on GitHub. Cheers. And I'm here to tell you it's worse than you thought. Really bad. <laughs> Before I start, this isn't about the intentions of the government. You will not be able to work if you do not have digital ID or the intentions of a future government. What's he going to do to us? I just want to talk about the architecture, the design decisions, and what we might be stumbling into, whether they meant it or not. Digital IDs can be incredibly useful things. They can protect you, they can be convenient, they can improve our lives, they can help prevent you getting ripped off and make it easier to transact and go about your business. And they could be a means of providing you with real tools to consent over how your data is used, but tucked away in the depths of the design documents are some dreaded words, phone home. Oh, phone. And not in a nice benevolent 80s alien kind of way. What this means is that every verification made with the digital ID, every transaction that touches it, pings home to a centralized server right back to the government. And you might be thinking, well, okay, they already know everything. The internet itself, as it currently is, is the biggest surveillance machine ever created. So they, they can't get much worse than it is, right? But what we're stumbling into here, whether it's intended or not, is the ability for both surveillance and now control. This isn't about checking in and verifying anymore. This is a giant kill switch, or rather millions of tiny ones that add up to massive impact. And not just over access to government services either. It's a confirm or deny, a yes or a no to any potential transaction that involves your identity. They all phone home. There's an inevitability to the contagion of this. These digital IDs will be associated with wallets that contain all other sorts of information, other data, and they will reach and can reach into every corner of your life. From where you travel, to the services you access, to what you buy, to websites you visit, to apps you use, connecting digital IDs, to digital wallets, to data, to devices, to banks, to payments, to facial recognition. A lot of stuff. Every transaction that phones home, phone home, which is all of them, can be verified, confirmed or denied. Computer says yes or... Computer says no. I'm not saying they would. I'm not saying this is the intention, but the door is open thanks to the capabilities that are built into the design. And it's because every verification... Phone home. <sighs> And it doesn't have to be this way either. The technology already exists to build these digital IDs in ways that allow you to confirm your ID or any aspect of you that you choose without any third party being involved. It's like verifying your age or the fact that you have a valid driver's license. Wait, you changed your name to McLovin? Or any other type of information. And you can verify this without revealing any other info about you. You can do it in a decentralized way and heck, you can even do it with a digital ID without even being connected to the internet. These technologies are called cryptographic keys, zero knowledge proofs, decentralized identities and autonomous networks. And they're already in use around the world for real right now. They're being built into other specs. They're being used by other countries. So we can have our cake and eat it. But what we're stumbling into isn't mechanisms for fraud prevention or communication safety or democratic process, it's inadvertently setting up a path for control and a massive attack surface for malicious actors, for the baddies, for hackers, for anyone hostile. Our autonomy, along with many other decentralized privacy focused builders, we've built the tools that allow us to have all the amazing benefits of digital ID without the dangers of it. This is the way that governments should be building these systems with consent and with technology, we all have a stake in because we all own it together.